Hello YouTube, this is Carlos again with CHS Electronics and I wanted to tell you about this uh, 7 segment display driver I see that comes with that A98D soldering station that I purchased to see if I can fix the, the problems with it uh, burning up. Well, let me tell you about that chip. I purchased these chips on eBay and it comes with like a 10 for 309 plus $1.85 of shipping and they come directly from China. So here so you can see that 309 and here's the chip and uh, let me tell you this little chip was a pain in the neck to get running. It uh, well let me show you the data sheet on it. As you can see, it comes written in Chinese, and the translator that Google has isn't very good, but I found a website that, that does it pretty well, or good enough, and so it translates it in English for you. But it's still kind of hard to make out what, it, what it's saying, because of course, you know, the translation isn't very good in English. So after about uh, a full day of trying to get this to work, I finally got it to work. So I mounted it on this board, which is my version of the uh, 898D soldering station. And uh, as you can see right here, here's where the, the IC is actually mounted this one here is for the for the microcontroller that i'll be using uh, to to run this thing it's not focusing uh oh so anyways uh there's a board for that that i've been using so let me show it to you in the back here all i did was uh got some some uh, ribbon cable wires and I was able to uh, solder it on and you can see it's a little difficult but I got some power wires and some and some uh, signal wires going in there mounted it in the back the way it's supposed to go which is pretty good actually and that's the minimum brightness by the way so I'm using my breadboard here and I'm using uh, pick 16 up 887 which right now is on a little breakout board that I designed a while back and uh, well here's one uh, it was one of my first ones made at Osh Park and as you can see this one uh, I guess the chip doesn't work because I don't remember why I put an X on it but uh, all it has is a little reset button a programming port and two pins for power and then you can just connect your jumpers like that, like I did, to your breadboard and, and do it that way. I don't know, I may make a, another version where the pins actually come down through the bottom of the board so you can just stick it on a breadboard and not have to worry about, about jumper wires. Well, anyways, the seven and segment displays are... Uh, I bought those at Amazon and they're 950 for a pack of five. They're three digits by seven segments. So they're pretty good. I like them. I like the, the bright colors, the red. I think they're pretty bright. They're very clear in the black background. So about when I first bought them, they were 750 a pack of five, but they've gone up $2 in price. So, go figure. But uh, I think I'm gonna order more pretty soon. And of course, they're uh, they were supposed to be their equivalents to the 431, sorry, 4301 AS seven segment displays. So, as you can see, I've designed a board specifically for driving those two seven segment displays. I call it the TM1620 six digit display. And all it has is the IC chip, 
a filter cap for or a bypass cap for for the power at the, at the power input it's got the five pin header with the ground strobe clock data and five volts and it's got an rc filters at the data lines that were suggested by the data sheet let me show you that so as we go down into the circuits here they show you all the clocking schemes and how many bytes you have to transmit to it in order for it to to display properly which was a pain to figure out by the way but uh, here's a, a, an application circuit where they use all six digits and as you can see all segments are connected to each other segment one segment one segment one in this case it would be a b c d e f g and then the decimal point and the grids are the commons so they have grid one through six so that's for six so here's a schematic here's your data lines and as you can see they put three 10k pull up resistors with three 100 picofarad capacitors and they say to use this so that in case uh, you have trouble displaying or it's not reading your signals properly that you can use these filters to improve the signal quality uh, normally I don't use those but uh, I went ahead and incorporated them into this design and so let me show you a little bit more about it of course here you can see it's just a regular schematic with your seven your segments your clocks your grounds and your grids and how they all connect to each of these uh, seven segment displays and then I filled the schematic with a bunch of notes stating what each uh, se uh, segment means so uh, when it comes to sending data bytes so you, you can see that I also included a small uh, wiring diagram to show how to wire it up and then I gave a list of the commands and uh, s simple explanations as to what they mean and then lower down here I gave uh, initializ initialization sequence for three wire serial mode which is the only mode you have but anyways um, so I, I kind of give a list of steps of, of which bytes to send and what order and then how you can um, what to fill your, your, your data bytes because you have 12 data bytes that you have to fill and you have to send them all 12 out at one time every time you send you update your display so <clears throat> and that can be a little bit of an inconvenience but it's it's fast I don't notice it I can make it scroll really quickly I can make it count really quickly so I'm good and then I'll also provide a uh, clocking scheme and tell you how many commands you need to send and then how many bytes you need to send and the first byte is always going to be your data byte that you actually want to display and your second byte or the byte after that <clears throat> is going to be a null byte so you're going to have to fill those with zeros <clears throat> and you're going to have to do that for the remaining 10 so first byte is zero second byte is, i mean uh, first byte is, is actual data second byte is zero uh, third byte is data fourth byte is zero so all the odd number bytes have uh, data for you to display and all even number bytes are going to be zeros. And that's all explained here in this section. Now you do, one thing you do have to pay attention is that every time you send a command byte, you have to strobe, uh, you have to post the strobe uh, within the eight clock signal. So when the clock is high, you have to be able to pulse the strobe here uh, quickly enough to within that clock signal to uh, to load that data byte and you do over that command byte and, it, and for every command byte you do you have to pulse it on the eighth clock you have to pulse that str that strobe but for every data byte you send you don't use the strobe so you just send all 12 data bytes with no strobe pulsing and then in the end once all your 12 data bytes are sent then you can uh, raise and leave high the strobe 
ready for the next uh, for the next commands. So you leave it high and then you bring it low to actually send commands. Otherwise, if you just send commands without bringing it low, it's going to ignore everything you're sending it. So you have to bring the strobe low first, then set your uh, data your data bit in at whatever state your your first bit is, and then you have to clock it in that state. So you know the normal serial serial clocking scheme with strobe. But uh, anyways, here's the board. Here's the three uh, filter caps that I included. Here's the layout. Uh, I think it came out pretty well. I went through like five different renditions of this of this layout just so I can make it to where I can feel. I say, okay, it, it looks pretty good. It has uh, two small 3.6 millimeter holes on each hand, and it has your 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 header here so you can connect it to any any microcontroller you choose. Now, uh, back to to this board. Uh, Y'all remember on my version, or this is my version schematic, where I organize everything according to how it is. So, how it should be, at least how, how things should be connected, and uh, that's how it is. That's how it came out. So this is my first display, this is my second display, first display here in a minute will will uh, read uh, 1, 2, 3, and then second display will be 4, 5, 6, and you'll see that here, there you go. And then this is my code version 1.0.1, I can flash it, then I'm scrolling left, and then I scroll right, then I count very quickly, I can count faster than that. I'm just doing it to where it's you know fairly feasible and only count to 100 and then I display the uh, alphabet to the letters that I can generate with this and then it starts all over and so that's just a, a display model or display code my heartbeat LED anyways there's that circuit board for that uh, soldering station and then uh, if you guys are interested here is the circuit board to this little guy, the PIC16F887 breakout board. I call it a PIC dip, because it's dual inline package or packaging. So all it is, is just a microcontroller with uh, pull down resistors on all the ports. And they're 20K or 10K, I can't remember too well, but I believe they're uh, 10K. And it has a programming port and it has a reset button and the two power pins and there's the layout of that board. Now what I didn't account for at the time was I didn't account for the spacing of the of the headers to fit within the actual breadboard but I think for the next version I'm going to go ahead and do that and maybe add some more functionality. Uh, anyways, uh, that's it for, for this video. If you guys are interested in one of these little boards, uh, I can, uh, they'll be going on the market, I guess that's what I should be saying. I, I'm, I'm going to be selling these here pretty soon. So if anybody, uh, if anybody's interested in one of those, uh, I can, I can sell you the ones I have now. Or if you want to wait the time, I can sell you the new ones that I make that, uh, of course, will be a little bit more expensive than these. But uh, you can get these for, I don't know, I haven't decided on the price yet, but uh, I've been actually using these very, very commonly to uh, using them to test code and, and things of that nature. So, yeah, they help me pretty good. But if you guys are interested in one of those, uh, give send me shoot me an email an email or if you guys are more interested in one of these which is the uh, display with all the information you need to get started uh, shoot me an email as well I'll I'll see if I can find a way how to uh, how to put these up on probably a some kind of website and and have them set up there sitting for a price. Now I'm not going to order these until anybody decides that uh, 
well i may i may order 10 or so and see if anybody decides to buy them uh, i haven't decided on the price yet but uh if you guys are interested please let me know and uh thank you guys for your time if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already see you guys and thank you for watching